Thank you very much for inviting me to take part in this symposium. In my talk, I will examine what is the essence of pink. Pink is a collected term for shades of red, lightened by the addition of white. This pastel color takes on very different meanings depending on the shade. This can be traced back to the primary color red, which in its blending displays a wide spectrum between blue and yellow. In the world's cultures and languages, there are a number of various designations for shades of pink, all of them with different meanings. So in Japan, we took up paint and brush to better understand which color tones belong to pink. The ability to perceive and interpret color is a product of sensorial and psychological processes as well as learned relationships. Colors also have a cultural significance in any given society. Pink is taken up by our senses more directly and at a greater number of different levels than any other color. This sensual experience is further highlighted by the material upon which the color appears as well as by the surroundings. The Austrian artist Franz West enhanced the color effect of his sculptures by setting them against bleak gray-brown landscapes. His metal sculpture, Why is Something and Not Nothing, painted bright pink, seems to appear out of nowhere. The pink paint lends the sculpture in an odd, strange, and surreal look. A similarly enigmatic pink colored form can be seen in the oil painting Nail Clipper by the Japanese artist Mihu Michikura. Pink in the form of a strange, fat, spiny shape appears to have unpleasantly attached itself to the young girl's toe. In a letter, Michikura wrote how, as a woman, she feels pink is a burden. Here we see another painting in which a woman is beset by pink. But here it is a pink of a different kind. In Otto Dix, the journalist Sylvia von Harden painted in Berlin in 1926, the artist depicts the journalist and poet in a confident pose. For the surrounding room, he chose a shrill pink. This shade of pink clashes with the red shades of her dress. The colors chafe at one another and give rise to dissonances. Society's conflicting understanding of a modern emancipated woman at that time was quite noticeable. The roaring 20s in Berlin were very turbulent times indeed. Pink's inherent ambivalence makes it an attractive color to work with. The opportunity to show this subtly serves as an incentive for an artistic examination of this ambivalence. Intense pink, also known as mauve or fuchsia, was a favorite of the expressionist Ernst Ludwig Kirchner. We can see pink in all its intensity in his painting Amselflur. The forms he chose are brutal, simple brush strokes and jagged projections and edges. This pink is aggressive, even threatening. His alpine landscapes shine forth in a palette of pink that stretches all the way to include a mystical violet. The work of James Lee Byers is at the same time both mystical and fanciful. Byers lived for many years in Japan, and it is there that he most likely developed a positive relationship to pink. His art focused on existential themes and the search for the beautiful. His choice of huge pieces of pink-colored silk 
for his actions and performances thus seems a logical one. For his action, Pink Silk Airplane, he created a dress for 100 people. Through 100 holes in the fabric, the participants put their heads. They were instructed by buyers to inhale and exhale at the same time. It should be imagined that you simultaneously lift it off the ground. Pink is a color of lightness. Everything seems to float. The heaviness of the ground seems to have been lifted. It is no longer bound to the earth. Many of the works seen here convey this association. One could almost think of flying carpets. Pink lens landscapes a surreal appearance. It is the color of fantasy. Paul Gauguin says in an interview, don't copy nature too literally. Art is abstraction. Derive it from nature as you dream in nature's presence. Choreographer Pina Bausch shows in her legendary piece Carnations the entire theater stage like a blooming blanket. It is covered with 3,000 silk scented carnations. The piece deals about love, less about the dream than about the reality and ex expression in fury, fear and yearning. The pink field of flowers is placed as a romantic counter image. Christo and Jean-Claude create a stunningly fantastic work of art with the surrounded islands in Biscayne Bay. It is arguably the greatest work of art ever realized in pink. Christo says in an interview, the pink shade selected for surrounded islands exhibit no strong ties to the nature and as an artificial color emphasizes and intensifies the man-made character of this artistic gesture in a very specific way. Pink seldom appears in our natural environment as we are not living in the ocean. It does not belong to the color spectrum of the rainbow. Nevertheless, there are light phenomena in which this range of color is present. The sky at sunset tends towards a yellowish pink and dawn's early light appears in cooler shades of pink. The darkness of night disappears at sunrise. Light and warmth, the elixirs of life, make their presence known. These are the positive moments of promise. Pink light is always a fleeting phenomenon. Only the brightening or fading light is pink. We have to wait for, if we wish to see it. It doesn't last long. The short intervals of time imply impermanence. This is a significant reference to romanticism. Pink is a color of transience. This is an important factor when it comes to our perception of pink. Every joy, every pleasure is always short-lived. This relationship also becomes evident when pink appears in the color of blossoms. The color medium, the petals, are frail and delicate. Their lifespan span is short. In Japan, pink is associated with the cherry blossom, the sakura. The blossoming cherry trees are a highly prized cultural event in the country. Every year, the Japanese devote a great deal of time to contemplating the clouds of blossoming pink trees and after just a few days, the falling snow of petals. They are a symbol of the death of young warriors, the samurai, killed in the prime of their lives. This side of beauty is intensified by the sensation of pain. Pink is a color of youth and springtime. The blushing of the blossoms is gently erotic. 
together with the fragrance they exude, they do not only beguile the insects, but also our human sense of smell. The scent of roses is one of the oldest base substances in the production of perfumes. Sensitivity is one of the primary sentiments associated with pink. This has its origins in the notion that pink is also one of the colors of the human skin. And it's the color of everyone's bodily orifices. We touch and feel with our skin. This thin, pink-colored skin is extremely vulnerable. The Japanese artist Emiko Kazahara shows large format pictures of the cervixes of several women. It is an area which is often obscured by, obscured by taboos concerning sexuality. In exchange for cervical cancer tests, black and white corpuscorpic photographs were given to the artist. They were colored into a uniform pink and enlarged until the cervix became the size of a human head. Thus, Emiko Kasahara reminds us on our passage, bringing us to world. The American artist Mike Kelly refers to inner spaces too. In his large-scale installation sublevel, he references the psychological and sexual connotations of the color pink. In it, he clads several rooms in an architectural models with a layer of pink crystal. When asked why pink, Kelly answers, because as everyone knows, it's all pink inside. Crack any dull geode and inside is its fiery heart. This is a lovely center of sensuality, free of sexual trauma. Pink is the color of yearning, the omnius, the auspicious, pink is the erotic. In situations in which acts of great courage are on public display, it is possible to use the vulnerability of pink nakedness to illustrate strength and, de and determination. Here we see the most famous painting of French Revolution, liberty leading the people, and this painting, appearing naked, is an offensive strategy. Allegorical figures of freedom combine eros and power. Naked figures represent a virtual El Dorado for Pink's painterly possibilities. When it comes to this classical theme, the color of flesh as the incarnate can be depicted in all shades of pink. In addition to these physical characteristics, the skin can also display emotional states. Inner states are transported to the surface. When horror causes the blood to freeze in our veins, we become pale. On the contrary, when our blood rushes to the surface, it causes us to blush. This can happen in moments of extreme anger or rage, but also when we feel embarrassment or are in love. Pink offers us countless pleasures in the form of tastes and smells. It tastes sweet, it smells flowery and fruity like, like no other color. Sweetness is a favorite and sweet dishes have one purpose in particular, the gratification of desire. In the performance Candy, the Japanese artist couple Yamashita Kobayashi is licking a pink candy of extra large size. The artists are known for artworks with, with activities charging incredibly energy and time into ordinary processes. The candy was produced by themselves. They said, only the artificial color can express the ideal color which people call pink. 
The performance took two months. <laughs> to be sure, take a look. <laughs> there is a very small candy in a glass bowl with traces. But what happens when pink is confronted with everyday life? When the surroundings are raw and unfriendly, when pink becomes dirty and stained. Here, a work by a Swedish artist, Annika von Hauswolf. Then pink finds it must fight for itself. The result shows tension. When pink building facades become dirty and their paint begins to peel, the effect is shabby and deplorable. It evokes notions of faded beauty. Pink's aura is prone to interference. Any type of worn out object is even more disgusting if it's pink. We don't want to own or touch it. Pink should be clean. But in the contrast between clean and dirty pink and this beauty condemned to ruin, we may also find a great deal that is attractive. The symbol of perishability and beauty paired with pain appeals to our sympathies. Indeed, pink appears to be influenced by life itself. Tender pink appears incredibly vital in forgotten, dismal surroundings. Here we see a detailed view of an old dilapidated building in Heidelberg, which the artist Via Lewandowski brought back to life by adding only a few distinct symbols. In this instance, lace curtains in a fresh and powerful pink. For the finale, I would like to show you little-known watercolors by Joseph Beuys. In his early career, the artist created these sensitive studies of women in delicate rose shades. When I discovered them, I felt that the drawn figures and the color choice of watery pink are an ideal composition. These small, intimate sketches may be representative for the rose color pink, a pastel shade so directly touching our feelings. Conclusions. Aesthetics can be translated as relating to perception by the senses. Pink offers a great plethora of sensual experiences this can lead us to conclude that pink is a particularly aesthetic color. Pink is beauty. A yearning for la vie en rose is the desire for a life of absolute beauty. This is of course an ideal. But this could be one of the reasons pink is dismissed by so many people. The specter is that of the naive dreamer. Pink is just too beautiful to be true. But if we think about a more comprehensive notion of truth, it can lead to a new way of looking at pink. We can, we can contemplatively observe the pink colors of the alpine glow if we are also prepared to allow for dreams, fears, and vulnerabilities. Courage is needed if we are to perceive these feelings and deal with them appropriately. I think our society is on the way to accepting this today. As an artist, I have decided to take up a clear position regarding the underappreciated pink. The title of my book, Pink, the Exposed Color, highlights this brave and vulnerable color. Pink slips in under the barrier of the rational. Pink is subversive. It touches upon so many of the unspoken words that move us. It is my concern to show how much pink appeals to us, how close it is to us. Pink is the color of closeness. Epilogue. The current hype 
surrounding pink illustrates the desire for something long since scorned. Now this, has attract this attractive taboo color has been rediscovered. It's fun to play around with it, and it's mainly the women who are getting involved. Hey girls, watch out. Thank you very much for your attention.